What up, what up? This is Adam Johnson of BasketballPantheon.com. Welcome to another Basketball Pantheon video. Um, we are going through the Atlantic Division today. We've been going through the historic rosters of different divisions uh, as we kind of work on this project. And um, this has been really fun. And uh, I guess we'll kind of very quickly go over, if you want to kind of go over the genesis of the whole thing, and go look at our, our previous videos. But basically, we wanted to get every franchise's uh, all-time team kind of show an example of another team where it's done already, um, and get their all-time team, but no duplicates. So, like, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar cannot be on the Lakers and the Bucks. Um, we kind of chose to where it was made more – it made it more fair to have him on the Bucks and not just load up the Lakers, who are already loaded, um, even though he played more seasons with the Lakers. So we did a few things like that, but for the most part, it's – the players are where they should be. Um, there's only a few times where we change that around. And then it's the that player's best statistical season with that team. Um, so I use the LeBron James example again. I think his overall best season was 2013, but we have LeBron on the Cavs. So in 2013, he was on the Heat. So we have to choose his best Cavs season, not his best uh, overall season of his career. Um, so let's just jump into it. This is the Atlantic Division. Let's start with the Philadelphia 76ers, first team up alphabetically on 2K. And Julius Irving, we're just going to kind of go through and explain um, which year we chose for them. So Julius Irving, this is the 1981 version of Julius Irving. Um, obviously, you know, going for as much realism as, realism as possible. Um, cannot change the hair on previously created players. So obviously we got him from the classic rosters. Can't change his hair, even though in 1981 his hair was a little bit shorter. Moses Malone, this is a created player. He's not on the game this year, really, really annoyingly. Um, this is a 1983 version of Moses Malone, his first season in Philly uh, and their title-winning season. Allen Iverson, 2001, very simple. Easy to choose, easy to have. We just, he's already on the game, just trade him over. Billy Cunningham, 1970 version of Billy Cunningham. Um... Yeah, probably. So we the statistical kind of stuff we used to create the ratings. You know, obviously a lot of basketball reference, you know, perusing. But um, we this is one of the better kind of old school players. Uh, unbelievable season in 1970. The the stats we kind of use the favors modern players just a little bit. Um, so this is a really high rating for an old player. Same as Dolph Shays. Back from the uh, Syracuse Nationals days. This is the 1958 version of Dolph Shays, and he'll probably be the starting power forward for this team. Hal Greer, uh, another Sixers legend, 1968 version of Hal Greer. Hal Greer is on the 67 title winning team, but we chose the season after that title winning team. Okay, this one's tough. Uh, we use the player model of Spencer Dinwiddie, because it actually kind of looks like Mo Cheeks. Um, edited all of that, edited his college, his height, his weight, everything, ratings, obviously. Um, and this is the 1986 version of Mo Cheeks. Why is he wearing number one, you, must, you might ask? Um, well, for some strange reason, the game will not let me choose number 10 um and i think there's some people out there who might say oh yeah it's because it's like it's retired and you can't choose that but i have been able to for other guys um i think if for anybody who watched the pacific division video i made this is the same thing with charles barkley and it's very annoying that i'm not allowed to do it so um yeah from behind it looks like no cheeks <laughs> i think obviously if you zoom in on his face you know the seasoned basketball fan would be like oh that's spencer dinwiddie how weird um but yeah i mean when you're playing the game it looks like no cheeks so other than the number so frustrating, but uh, very good player. Obviously deserved to be on this team. Andre Iguodala, 2012 version of Iguodala, his all-star season and his last season with Philly when they went to the second round of the playoffs. Chet Walker, um, another player from the 67 title winning team. We chose the 1967 version of Chet Walker. Andrew Toney, a short career, but a really good one when he was at his peak with the Sixers, and this is the 1983 version of Andrew Toney, the title winning season for the Sixers. Bobby Jones, the do-it-all, uh, small forward, power forward, great defensive player. Uh, he'll probably act as you know, somewhat of the sixth man on this team. This is the 1981 version of Bobby Jones. Doug Collins, 1976 version of him. Uh, moved him over from this 1977 Philadelphia 76ers, so pretty easy there. Joel Embiid, it's the current version of Joel Embiid. Um, yeah, I just it's almost a shout-out to the future of the Sixers, but I thought he deserved to make the roster. So, And then rounding out the roster is Daryl Dawkins, Chocolate Thunder, the 1980 version of Daryl Dawkins, and coincidentally, he's 80 overall. Henry Bibby, uh, kind of barely made the cut. He's already on the game, so pretty easy to move over. Uh, I'd rather have him than Eric Snow, so that's what we went with. So there's the Philadelphia 76ers. Sixers. Let's look at their rotation real quickly. Uh, their minutes per position, as you see up there, is all out of whack because they actually – only have one true point guard on the roster. So here's kind of what you can do. Um, if you want to start Mo Cheeks, you can do that and then put Iverson at the two. Um, but a lot of these teams that they're going to play in this tournament that we'll you know, eventually do with these teams are going to have pretty big twos. So you might, I mean, Cheeks can guard them, but you might want to go Iverson as your starter, bring Cheeks off the bench and start Greer. And then obviously Dr. J, 
uh, Dolph Shays and Moses Malone will round out the roster. But you could start Bobby Jones. I could see some people doing that. Or even go small and have Iggy at the four. You know, he does it with the Warriors, so might as well do it with this team. Um, but yeah, a lot of small forwards, you know, nominally on this. So you have, you know, Billy Cunningham, Andre Godala, Chet Walker, all on the bench, uh, backing up Julius Irving. So tough to find minutes, but uh, I think I was going to go ahead and switch this. I could see someone playing with Embiid in this tournament. So um, let's get Embiid right there. So yeah, awesome team. Andrew Tony, Doug Collins, Joel Embiid, Daryl Dawkins, and everybody around at the roster. 15-man roster for the Philadelphia 76ers. All right, let's get to the next team, um, a juggernaut of this tournament. The Boston Celtics, absolutely loaded, loaded team here. Um, Bill Russell, 1965 version of Bill Russell. There's a bunch of years he could have chosen. Um, super consistent, multiple MVPs, but uh, this was, this guy was on the game. It was one of his best seasons statistically, so we just made it the 1965 version of Bill Russell. Larry Bird, the 1986 version of Larry Bird. Another easy one. Just trade him over from the 1986 Celtics. Simple. Bob Cousy, here's a creative player. Um, I believe this is the player model for Mel Counts, if I'm not mistaken. Um, 1957 version of Bob Cousy. Legend. Easily the starting point guard for this team. Paul Pierce, the 2008 version of Paul Pierce. Another easy one. Just trade him over from the 08 Celtics. And, uh, yeah, either him or John Havlicek will start, kind of depending on what we want to do with the two-guard position, uh, I imagine. We'll still bring Sam Jones off the bench, but... Um, yeah, there's Paul Pierce. John Havlicek, Hondo. Um, we gave him the 1971 version of John Havlicek. Kevin McHale. 1987 version of Kevin McHale. 90 overall, so we made him a little bit better than the 1986 version and then added him from that team. Sam Jones. Uh, also the 1965 version of Sam Jones. We thought that was his best statistical season, so went ahead and did it. Robert Parrish, Chief. Uh, Robert Parrish, 1981 version of Robert Parrish. I believe his first season in Boston. Um, possibly second. Yeah, second. Uh, Dave Collins, creative player. Tough to make, but thought we did a decent job with him. You know, the red hair, you got to have that. Um, kind of made him look pretty intense because he was. Um, so this is the 1973 version of Dave Collins. Rajon Rondo. People forget his peak. They see this rating and they're probably thinking, what in the world? Why is he as good as, you know, a guy who was an MVP, you know, candidate multiple years? Um, yeah, at his absolute peak, Rondo was really, really good. And when he fit in with, you know, great players around him is when he was at his peak. So 87 might be t a tad high. It might be something we even play with a little bit. Um, but, yeah, uh, this is the 2010 version of Rajon Rondo. And this is, you know, I mean, if people forget in the playoffs that year, that year he was just unbelievable. Uh, very nearly helped lead them to the title, so... Uh, Tom Heinsohn, uh, the you know lovable radio or, or uh, TV guy for the Celtics, obviously made the team, won multiple championships. This is a 1962 version of Tom Heinsohn. Casey Jones won championships as a player and a coach with the Boston Celtics, and he, this is a 1965 version. Dennis Johnson, um, the late great Dennis Johnson. Uh, DJ could have could have put him on the Suns, but you know they were kind of loaded at guard. Obviously the Celtics are as well, but. Um, yeah, it just seemed more apt to uh, fitting to uh, put him on the Celtics. So this is 1986 version of DJ. Tom Sanders and Bill Sharman round out the roster. Uh, Bill Sharman, this is the 1954 version, 54 version of him, um, and he's 82 overall. So Tom Sanders made the team, had to change his number due to some kind of strange uh, things. But yeah, this is uh, Satch Sanders, 1965 version. So there's the Celtics. Let's go ahead and look at their uh, rotation. Starting lineup is absolutely phenomenal. Bob Cousy at point guard, John Havlicek at shooting guard, Larry Bird at small forward, Kevin McHale at power forward, and Bill Russell at center. Um, six man off the bench is 90 overall, Paul Pierce. Then you have Sam Jones, Robert Parrish, Rajon Rondo, Dave Collins, Tom Heinsohn, Dennis Johnson, Casey Jones rounding out the active roster. And then um, the inactives are Tom Sanders and Bill Sharman. So, yeah, quite a team. Um, and one that could go very, very deep in this tournament. Probably the second most talented team to the Lakers. Um, although, I don't even think the Lakers have two 96 overall players. So, yeah, pretty awesome team there. Uh, let's go ahead and get to the next team in the Atlantic Division, and that would be the New York Knicks. There they are. Um, this is, I think, the most recent team that we've finished. So, first up, Patrick Ewing. This is the 1990 version of Patrick Ewing. Um, easily on the he was on the game already, so we just traded him over and edited his ratings a little bit. Walt Frazier, 1970 version of Walt Frazier, the first title winning team for the Knicks. Uh, yeah, this was a no brainer. Uh, Bernard King, this is a creative player, 
probably the last guy we created actually. Um, thought we did a pretty good job with this. Looks looks pretty good. So he'll be the smart, starting small forward for this team. He can obviously play some four. And in the modern NBA, he would have absolutely played four. So that'll be fun to kind of slide him up a spot in the, you know, in the uh, starting lineup. But this is the 1984 version of Bernard King. Willis Reed, the captain, uh, will most likely come off the bench if, unless we put him at power forward. Uh, we still haven't totally decided what to do there. But uh, this is a 1969 version of Willis Reed. Richie Guerin, another creative player, uh, probably the the best early Nick. Um, this is a 1962 version of Richie Guerin. Dave DeBusher, all around power forward, uh, great defensive player. This is the 1974 version of Dave DeBusher. Allen Houston, another creative player. Uh, tough to kind of decide what to do with his hair and which exact season to choose because um, there's you know a couple to choose from. But we went with 2000 Allen Houston. John Starks. This one was simple. Traded him over from the 1995 Knicks, um, and this is actually the 1993 version of John Starks. Uh, 95 version. I can't remember if I said 85 or 95. Uh, Dick Barnett, another one we traded from the old school team, um, and this is the 1966 version of Dick Barnett. Harry Gallatin. This is a creative player. Um, 1954 version of Harry Gallatin. Charles Oakley. Uh, recently in the news, Charles Oakley uh, kind of got in a bit of a uh, fracas at the uh, <laughs> Madison Square Garden recently, but obviously he deserved to be, be on the team. This is the 1994 version of Charles Oakley. David Lee, one-time All-Star with the Knicks in 2010, so that's the version we chose uh, just before he left for the Warriors, his last season with the Knicks. Chris House Porzingis, um, thought he deserved to make the roster, kind of just similar to Joel Embiid, almost like a, a shout-out to the Knicks, you know, present and future. And obviously, he's had a couple of really good seasons. So this is the current version of Kristaps Porzingis. Bill Bradley, um, Princeton's own Bill Bradley, 1973 version of him, the second title-winning team for the Knicks. And then Bill Cartwright rounds out the roster. He's on the game. He had a couple of good seasons with the Knicks, you know, decent seasons with the Knicks at least. This is a 1983 version of Bill Cartwright. We just threw him on as the kind of the 15th man on this roster. So let's look at their rotation. Uh, starters, Walt Frazier, Richie Guerin, Bernard King, Dave DeBusher, Patrick Ewing. You could, you know, because Will Street's not the biggest guy in the world, so you could start him here if you want to go for the top, you know, rating. But, um, and then kind of modern NBA, you might do this and then either start, you know, one of these two wings, Bill Bradley even. Uh, so, yeah, but for now, this is kind of what the starting line is going to look like. Ewing, DeBusher, King, Garen, and Frazier. And off the bench, Willis Reed, Alan Houston, John Starks, David Lee, Charles Oakley, Bill Bradley, Harry Galton, Dick Barnett, and then in reserves, Chris Porzingis and Bill Cartwright. Pretty good team. Um, it'll be fun to play with, too. All right, next up is the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, Brooklyn slash New Jersey Nets. And obviously, this this part of the uh, franchise it, you know, encompasses the ABA era two in which in which they were very good but we did put dr j on the sixers he just had a longer time period with them even though it was tempting because dr j's probably best overall season was with the nets in the aba so um but anyway jason kidd is first up and by far the best player on this team um, if you take away julius Irving, he is by far the best player in this franchise history so this is the 2003 version of jason kidd the second year they made the finals um and that that was the year they lost to the spurs uh, a series that i was at uh Two of the games, games one and game six of that series in San Antonio. Uh, but anyway, yeah, 2003 version of Jason Kidd. Creative player. Looks pretty good, I thought. Kenny Anderson, another creative player. He was hard to create. I just I couldn't quite nail the face down. Um, but kind of telling that him and Derek Coleman are the next two best players in this list. Uh, both him and Derek Coleman uh, is the 1994 version of these two guys. So Kenny Anderson will come off the bench, and he's the second best player on the roster, so not great. Uh, another point guard, Michael Ray Richardson. Uh, this is the 1985 version of Michael Ray Richardson. Drazen Petrovic, he's already on the game. Just had to trade him over and edit him, made him better because it's the it's a Blazers version of Petrovic that's on the game. Um, and he's probably going to be a starting shooting guard. So this is the 1993 version of Drazen Petrovic just before he tragically died. Joe Johnson uh, could have easily put him on the um, Atlanta Hawks. You know, he had better seasons with them, but they were just loaded at the wing position. Um, so I decided – spread out the talent a little bit, and put him on the nets. So this is the 2014 version of Joe Johnson. Billy Paltz, going back to the ABA days. Uh, I think this is where he is. 1975 version of Billy Paltz. Big center, uh, but had really, really nice numbers that year. A uh, little bit inflated probably for ABA stats. I mean, it, you know, 
it's like Hassan Whiteside level, and I think Hassan Whiteside is an 87 right now, so it didn't seem quite fair to make him that good. So, uh, Keith Van Horn, that, honestly, that's actually Kyle Singler, um, but we edited him to make it Keith Van Horn. A yeah, little bit lazy, but you know, didn't feel like creating an entire new player model for Keith Van Horn. But 1999 had a really good season, so I thought he deserved to make the team. Make the team, and he did. Kenyon Martin, I like this one. Uh, this one looks good. Obviously, I wish he could do tattoos because you know he's tatted up, including some prominent ones on his neck. Uh, cannot do that though. So this is the 2004 version of Kenyon Martin. Richard Jefferson moved him over from the Cleveland Cavaliers. Pretty easy. Um, and it's a 2006 version of Richard Jefferson. So you know the Nets don't have like the the top end talent, but. You know, two to ten is really solid. I mean, you know, eighty-three to eighty-six—that's that's pretty good. So, and none of them really reaches. And then, uh, yeah, Brooke Lopez. Um, this is the two thousand thirteen version of Brooke Lopez. Buck Williams, uh, excellent defensive player, probably going to start for this team. Nineteen eighty-three version of Buck Williams. It probably could make him a little bit better, honestly. Uh, Otis Birdsong, here's a creative player. Uh, nailed it. If you look up Otis Bird's song, I think we did a pretty good job. I think people will agree with that. But another wing on this team. 1984 version of Otis Bird's song. Kerry Kittles, creative player. Uh, tough face to, to, to nail, but I uh, kind of wish he was on the game. I wish the 03 Nets were on the game. This would have been much, much easier. Um, but this is the 1998 version of Kerry Kittles, and that rounds out the roster. This is only a 14-man roster as opposed to most of them being 15. So starting lineup would be Jason Kidd, Drazen Petrovic, Joe Johnson, Derek Coleman and Brooke Lopez. You know what? We're actually going to start Buck Williams. Let's do that. Didn't seem fair to start. Buck Williams can swing between the uh, three and the four. So, thought let's go ahead and do that. Lower his minutes a little bit. You guys are seeing the process in action here. There we go. All right. So, Kid, Petrovic, Buck Williams, Derek Coleman, Brooke Lopez. And then off the bench is Kenny Anderson, Michael Ray Richardson. Billy Paltz, Joe Johnson, Richard Jefferson, Kenya Martin, Otis Birdsong, Kerry Kittles, Keith Van Horn in reserve. All right, there's the Nets. Probably not going to be the most exciting team to play with. Uh, although Kid, Kid will be fun. Um, I do wish just the regular Jason Kidd was on the game, but uh, alas, he is not. So the last team in the Atlantic Division is the Toronto Raptors. Um, we'll go through them, and then we'll get you guys out of here. So uh, start with Vince Carter. Best player in franchise history. Him and Chris Bosh probably have a claim to that, but I, I think it's Vince. Um, was my favorite player growing up. This is the 2001 version of Vince Carter. He's already on the game as that version, so just traded him over, and there you go. Uh, Chris Bosh obviously moved him over from the Miami Heat, um, where he, you know, fortunately looks like his career might be over, but uh, awesome, awesome seasons with the uh, Toronto Raptors, the 2010 version of Chris Bosh, just before he left for Miami. Uh, again, another one like Dr. J. I wish he could change the hair because if he'd give Bosh his little, like, dreads that he had back in the day, that would make this so much more realistic. But uh, Kyle Lowry, this is the current version of Kyle Lowry. Unbelievable player. He'll be a starting point guard, obviously. And the starting shooting guard will be DeMar DeRozan. Also the current version of DeMar DeRozan. I just don't think those two have ever been better. So um, there they are, both 88 overall. Jonas Valanciunas. Um, Kind of shows what what a nice period this is for the Raptors, where you know players three two or uh, yeah three four and five, and on what we consider their kind of franchise history are all current players. So this is also a 2017 version of Jonas Valanciunas, Damon Sotomar, uh, 1997 version of Damon Sotomar. He was on the game already with the 2000 Blazers, just traded him over from there. Marcus Camby, here's a creative player. Um, this is I want to say his rookie year. Yeah, rookie year. Marcus Camby, we've been 80 overall, underrated rookie year. Um, and yeah, I thought he started to make the team. Antonio Davis, this is the 2001 version of Antonio Davis. Will probably end up acting as a starting center. I guess you could throw Camby if you would like, um, if you want some more shot blocking. But Andrea Bargnani, the number one pick. Um, you know, now we're starting to get to the point where it's like you know big drop off. Obviously, you know, the top their top four is really solid. And then, yeah, the rest of it, not so much. Um, so, Andrea Bargnani made the roster. Uh, let's see what year we chose for him. And that would be the 2010 version of Andrea Bargnani. Doug Christie. People forget he was a Raptor. Um, had some good seasons with him. 2000 version of Doug Christie. His better seasons were probably with the Kings. Um, but the Kings didn't need this, you know, a 78 overall. They were too good. So, spread out the talent a little bit. Jose Calderon. Uh, this is the 2008 version of Jose Calderon. And then the junkyard dog, Jerome Williams, had to kind of switch his number around because we wanted Christie to have 13. So uh, Jerome Williams is the 2003 version 
And and then Matt Bonner rounds out the roster. Again, kind of shows the slim pickings it was the rest of the roster. You probably got to put like Terrence Ross on there, you know, ahead of him or even like Corey Joseph or someone else from like the modern team. Even, you know, Damari Carroll, whoever it might be. But I uh, thought it was funny to have Bonner on there. So we threw him on. This is the 05 version of Matt Bonner. So here's your rotation. Kyle Lowry, DeMar DeRozan, Vince Carter, Chris Bosh, Jonas Valanciunas. Nice starting lineup. Um, I mean, and, and it's going to be a fun starting lineup. Versatile. They can shoot. You can do pick and pops with Bosh. You know, decent defensively if, if they actually, you know, care to try, the, especially your wing guys there. Um, but, yeah, fun fun starting lineup. And then the bench is pretty weak. So Marcus Camby, Damon Sotomayor, Andre Bargnani, Antonio Davis, Doug Christie, Jose Calderon, Jerome Williams, and Matt Bonner round out the roster. Only 13 players. Yeah, again, there's a bit of a stretch to throw more on there. So. We stuck with that. So there's the Atlantic Division. Um, we have two divisions left, both in the Western Conference. As soon as we finish those teams, we'll get a video out to you guys, and then we'll kind of start this tournament and kind of explain what we're going to do with them. So, um, again, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, be on the lookout for the next one.